Meet Jim Cleves, astrobiologist at the Tokyo Institute of Technology. He's also a biochemist and very interested in the origin of life. In fact, he wrote a book about it, A Brief History of Creation, Science and the Search for the Origin of Life. I sat down with him in Tokyo and we talked about the question, are we alone? My name is Jim Cleves. Are we alone? You and I? No. <laughs> I would be very surprised if we are. Why do you say that? The vastness of the cosmos. What is life? Uh, I would say life is a um, self-replicating chemical system that is capable of undergoing evolution. So Jerry Joyce's NASA definition, are you happy with that? I'm happy with it. Yeah. You're happy. Do you have any reservations about it? You winced a little bit when you said you're happy. Um, I'm also okay with um, computer life. I think if you can make something in silico that has a certain set of properties, you could call that living. Uh, are viruses alive? No. Why can't? Why not? I, I'm going to say this virus is not because it is a parasite on another system that is alive. And if you take away that system, the virus fails, right? Like a molecule of RNA? For example. So RNA is not alive? Unless it's capable of replicating itself by itself. What's your favorite solution to the Fermi's paradox? If we're not alone, then where are they? My favorite? Yes. I just read this nice book. Was it like 73 solutions to the Fermi's paradox? Stephen Arnold? Webb's new book. Yeah, have you with read it? With the intro by Reeves, Martin Rees. That's right. right. So I read the first one that only had 50, and I think now he has 75. Yeah, I something, something like this, yeah. But I mean, there are, some are better than others. Um, What's your favorite? I think that probably the more the question is that the level of consciousness we're at is a pretty short-lived one, and things are likely to be either very far behind you or very far ahead of you. Okay. So they'll be very difficult to recognize. I think that chemical space is very big, and chemical space, when we say that, is it's the total type or set of types of molecules that can exist. The actual space ends up being much smaller, the things that get instantiated by natural processes. How does that selection happen? Uh, it's whatever the processes are that make chemicals. I don't know, are they different on different planets, or might they all be the same? They're or? probably all the same. I mean, they, all the same. So it, what? Well, depending on the temperature and UV and so on, I mean, you might get it. It's kind of like if you bake a brownie mix at 300 degrees instead of 400 degrees. You still get brownies, but they're a little different, right? So, but the starting aggregates of atoms are probably about the same. And then the pathways that build up for those get more branched and more complex, but some of them are heavily trodden. A few are outliers, right? But my sense is that the, the ones that actually give rise to replicative phenomenon are not so many. If I gave you $100 billion with the caveat of you have to spend this money to try to answer the question, are we alone, how would you spend it? Well, it would have to be telescopes, right? Telescopes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure if we're going to find evidence of not, of, of not being alone, it will be beyond Earth. That would, that would be my best guess. So you don't think, I, but you just read the book, uh, yeah. 75 Solutions, and one well, of them okay. was we wouldn't recognize them, and they are amongst us, so we just don't recognize them. Right, and I just don't know how you would start looking here if we're not How about nano-aliens and using electron microscopes to look for nano-aliens? That's a thought. An interesting thought. Um, I mean, so does does finding life on Mars that is indigenous Martian life count as not being sure, alone? Sure, sure, sure. That is probably your safest bet.